We're going to talk a bit more about these final days of campaigning ahead of that second round of the French legislative election with Paul Smith, who joins me from Nottingham. Paul, thanks for being with us. Always great to have you on the show. Uh, let's start with what Clovis was just saying a few moments ago about how now the far right in France is really trying to present itself as the normal party, the reasonable choice. First of all, is that anything that you ever thought you would see in your lifetime here in France? Well, uh, not sure I thought I'd see it in my lifetime, but that presentation of being normal is exactly exactly actually how they've been performing or presenting themselves since 2022. There's an expression in French of fairly cravat. It's, you know, to look smart and be moderate. And after a first round where they've really kind of pushed to the, the, the right in order to bring the, uh, the far right votes in. Now Bardella is posing, you know, he sees himself as a prime minister in waiting. So it's what we expect between first and second rounds is that you would, you would play to a more moderate crowd. And that, of course, is, is what uh, Le Pen was also talking about in your, uh, your excerpt there when she was talking about appealing also to maybe deputies who are elected on a Les Républicains ticket. So, so it, yes, it's what I would expect because the tactic would be after going hard for your core voters in the first round, you've then got to try to bring in the moderates in the second round. Well, in practice, though, how moderate would the national rally be if they were to get into power? I mean, what are some of their key policies? Have things changed that much? No, not really. I mean, they, they, uh, their, their policies about the approach towards uh, people with dual nationality and the posts that they can occupy, that's kind of a, a headline. But there's a lot of, you know, that, that hides a lot of rhetoric that I think is a lot of people in France are finding very difficult to cope with, particularly people, friends of mine, for example, who are indeed uh, dual nationals. They're talking about taking a very hard line with privatizing TV and radio. And that's, uh, you know, on, on, a, on, on the basis of of, of uh, selling off uh, TV and radio as, as a way of making things more, more neutral, more independent. In fact, uh, the opposite will happen, as we've seen in, in this campaign. So there's, there's a kind of a, a... And, of course, this goes back a long way. When Le Pen became president of the party, this kind of uh, detoxifying the image of the, of the national rally, but actually the real policies behind that, they look... Uh, detoxified. They look like the demon, the, de the devil has been taken out of them. But actually, when you begin to look at the detail, uh, the devil is still there. Well, that's something that in any case, the left alliance and the centrist uh, coalition are, are trying to convince of voters. Let's talk a bit more about this phenomena of the désistement, this dropping yeah. out of the race in these three party races. Uh, tell us a bit more about that strategy. And first of all, is that a move that has worked in the past? It has indeed worked in the past, most spectacularly in the uh, in regional elections. In fact, in 2015, for example, where Le Pen herself and her her niece were leading after the first round in their various different regions, um, the socialists basically just decided they they stood down and said, you know, back back the Republican parties, the the right, because we must stop the far the far right from passing the most spectacular the best known example of course although the left wing candidate was was eliminated in the 2022 uh, sorry the 2020 presidential election the left rallying to Jacques Chirac in the presidential election so this is something that has worked in the past the problem here is actually that quite a lot of figures on in the center of french politics not macron so much but actually people like edouard philippe the former prime minister uh, François Bayrou, the leader of the Modem party, they are very reticent about uh, getting into any kind of agreement to stand down on behalf of or in favour of a left-wing candidate, particularly because they see behind some of those candidates the, the, the shadow of, of Jean-Luc Mélenchon. So that's what's causing the the, the problems there, for the, particularly for the centre, a little bit for the left, but mostly for the centre in terms of where they will stand down. Right. And it does seem like many on the left are saying that Macron's coalition is not doing enough or precisely because of what you were just saying. I mean, looking a bit more toward the future, does it look like at this point, in your opinion, that we are just he heading toward a hung parliament? I think we are. But I think, that, again, you know, let's go back to what Le Pen was saying uh, in that excerpt, that there will be, as they were in, in 2022, Les Républicains are going to be the the kind of the hinge around which this whole thing, I think, will swing. And it's not beyond the realms of possibility that uh, Republican candidates who are elected, not necessarily with the support of the Macron uh, or with the support of the left, might actually swing towards giving 
uh, Bahadela enough seats to give him an absolute majority. So the deals are not by any mean uh, by, by any means done. I think we will get uh, a hung parliament, but the numbers on Sunday are going to be extremely tight. And when you start offering people ministries, that's when they start to give in to temptation. So I think that there, there is a lot of dealing still to be done. Mm. All right, Paul, thanks so much uh, for taking the time to speak to us. Paul Smith there in Nottingham.